Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Chemistry, the 2018 AP Chemistry exam, free response problem number one. If you haven't done this problem, make sure you go to MrAiden.com, look up the 2018 AP Chem exam, give yourselves about 23 minutes, and do problem number one. This video uh, is going to tell you, uh, I'm going to explain everything uh, for this problem, as well as give you the scoring guidelines, and then you're obviously going to put your daily test scores in for me to take a look at in MrAiden.com. So let's get to it. Uh, we, you can see here, we have a balanced chemical reaction. It's an oxidation reduction reaction. We have sodium thiosulfate plus four NaOCl, that's sodium hypochlorite, plus two moles of the sodium hydroxide. And so you can see the first thing they're going to ask in this problem is they're going to ask you to find the oxidation number, or fancy word for charge, of the NaOCl the NaOCl. So how do we find the oxidation number of NaOCl? Well, I know the oxidation number of sodium, it's plus one. I know the oxidation number of oxygen, it's negative two, except for when it's in peroxides. Remember that uh, f first order kinetics peroxide. So we need to find the chloride. Now it's obviously going to always equal here zero because the overall charge is zero. So plus one, negative two, that's negative one, which means the chlorine has to be plus one. Plus one is its oxidation number. And so uh, that is gonna be worth, obviously, one point. It's not that hard. You should know how to do oxidation numbers, okay? The second part of the problem is going to ask us to find the number of grams. And the number of grams, they gave me milliliters, they gave me molarity, and so we know what to do. The molarity is 0 0.500 molar of the sodium thiosulfate. What do we always do with molarity? We multiply by the liters. We have 0.1 liters of this solution. That gives me the number of moles. Then we can multiply by the molar mass of this sodium thiosulfate. That's 158.10 when you add it up on your periodic table, grams per mole. And that is going to give me 7.90 grams of the sodium thiosulfate. Remember, always put the units, put who the units are assigned to, and take a look at your significant digits. There's three significant digits in 0 0.500, which means we rounded to three significant digits. Now, B is going to be worth two points. There's going to be one point for finding the number of moles. You can either find this explicitly, which means calculate it out, or implicitly, which means, like I did, just put it inside the problem. You're going to get one point for the correct answer. So B is worth two points. We're already three points into this 10-point problem. Let's go to C. C, you can see, uh, we another student uses in the experiment. The student uses solutions in the table below. You can see sodium thiosulfate. We have a concentration. We have a volume. Sodium hypochlorite concentration volume. Sodium hydroxide concentration volume. What do you see? They're the same concentration, same volume, which means the same number of moles, the same number of starting moles. And I want to know what which one's the limiting reactant, which means I have to take a look at how many moles each one is using. We're only using one mole. We're using one mole of the sodium thiosulfate. For every four moles of the sodium hypochlorite, for every two moles of the sodium hydroxide, which means we're using more moles of the sodium hypochlorite than every other um, substance or species. So sodium hypochlorite will be my limiting reactant. Now that is actually going to be worth two points. Number one, one point for specifying that sodium hypochlorite is your limiting reactant. One point for this reasoning, this justification, a valid justification that the NaOCl will run out first because I'm using four moles for every one to two moles of the other species. Okay. So now we move from kind of a stoichiometry problem into a thermo problem. You can see it is a calorimetry problem. We're using thermo. Hopefully you know what equation comes to mind. Q equals MC change in T. You can see how here the temperature of the calor calorimeter starts at 20 degrees. The temperature goes up very, 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 very high, which means we have a change in the temperature. 
we they want us to know the change in the temperature. So the change in temperature obviously is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. The final temperature is approximately 32.5 degrees Celsius. Obviously they give you a little bit of wiggle room here. It starts at 20.0 degrees Celsius. You can see three significant digits stay with three significant digits, which means the change in temperature is approximately 12.5 degrees Celsius. And that is obviously worth one point. Now something that I want you to see in this problem right away is if the temperature of the calorimeter went up, that means the calorimeter is absorbing heat, which means that means the reaction is giving off heat. So I know my delta H of my reaction is going to be negative or exothermic. That's something to keep in mind. So the next part of the problem is we're finishing off this thermo problem. And you can see E1 is that they give us some information on the calorimeter, which means I'm going right to Q equals MC change in T. My mass obviously is 15.21 grams. My uh, specific heat is 3.94 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Make sure you keep your units. It really does help out in these types of problems. My change in temperature I just found was 12.5 degrees Celsius. And that gives me a heat of 749 joules. Now they're saying what's the heat absorbed by the calorimeter? Uh, it's actually, actually, the heat absorbed by the calorimeter is neg negligible. We want to know the heat that is released during the reaction. So this amount of heat was absorbed by the calorimeter by the reaction. The same heat was given off. So you can see the Q of the heat that's released is negative 749 joules. Now you don't need the negative for this part of the problem. You only get one point for calculating the 749 joules. But to keep in mind that Q, that heat that is released in the reaction is negative 749 joules. Okay, So let's go to E number two. Number two is asking us for the enthalpy of the reaction in kilojoules per mole. Now I know the number of joules, which means I just have to know the number of moles. How do I find the number of moles is I got to go back to that table that I just had before. That table, if I come back two slides right here, we, we remember the sodium hypochlorite is my limiting rea reagent. And so my concentration is 0.5 molar. My volume is 5 milliliters. So I'm going to take 0 0.500 molar times 0 0.005 liters. And if I do that in my calculator, I have 0.5 times 0 0.005. I end up getting, I end up, end up getting 0 0.0025 moles of remember that sodium hypochlorite. Okay, that, so that's that that was my starting moles. Okay. But how do I know how many moles that I actually used in my reaction? Well, I take that 0 0.0025 moles of sodium hypochlorite and I'm going to divide by 4 moles because I had 4 moles in my chemical reaction. So when I divide that by 4, I get 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. This is how many moles produced the Q of negative 749 joules. So now I'm going to find my delta H. Remember, I, I want my delta H in kilojoules per mole. So I want kilojoules on my numerator. So it's negative 0.749 kilojoules over the number of moles, that's 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. I put negative, I do this in my calculator, and I end up getting negative 1200, negative 1198, which rounds to negative 1200. That is going to be kilojoules per mole negative 1200 kilojoules per mole. And that is my enthalpy of my reaction. Now you can see there's definitely more than one point in this problem. You're going to find one point finds this number of moles. Okay? And then one point finds the enthalpy with a negative value. Now let's say you get this number of moles wrong, but you calculate the enthalpy correct. You would still get that one point, but you need to have that negative on that enthalpy in order to get that second point. 
So E2 is worth two full points. Okay. Let's uh, take a look. We're going to finish out this problem right here. And as we finish out this problem, uh, F is asking, what's going to happen to the enthalpy if you double the volume? So we have a new the student repeats experiment. We double the volume. Well, think about it. If we double the volume, that doubles the number of moles. So there's more moles of your sodium hypochlorite. But what is going to happen when we have more moles of sodium hypochlorite? It's going to make more heat for the reaction. Now keep in mind, if there's more moles and there's more heat, what happens to the delta H, which is the amount of heat per mole, that's going to stay the same. They're both going to cancel each other out. And keep in mind, remember my analogy of, of gasoline. Gasoline, if you have a little bit of moles of gasoline, it produces a little bit of heat. If you have a lot of moles of gasoline, it produces a lot of heat. But the delta H stays the same because the delta H is a ratio of the amount of heat per mole. So you're going to get one point. This is worth one point for this correct uh, explanation that the amount of heat is going to stay the same as calculated in the first experiment. Okay. Now, um, you can take a look. This last part of this problem is asking for the balanced net ionic reaction of the reaction. So let me take, and I'm going to copy and paste this reaction down here. And I'm going to want to do the net ionic reaction. Now, hopefully, we're, we're OK with that net ionic reaction. We've been practicing it all year, which means we're going to get rid of any kind of spectator ions. Okay, So here, we have sodium thiosulfate aqueous, which means the only the thiosulfate is going to be there. The sodium is a spectator ion. We have four moles of sodium hypochlorite. It's only the hypochlorite. The sodium is a spectator ion. We have two sodium hydroxide. We know we only have two hydroxides. The sodium is a spectator ion. It produces two moles of sodium sulfate. The sodium is going to be a spectator ion again. So we have sulfate. And we have four moles of NaCl. The sodium, again, is a spectator ion. So we have four moles of chloride. And the water is a molecule, so he's liquid water. And obviously, that last one is going to be worth one point for the net ionic reaction. So if we do a quick review, um, A is going to be worth one point. B is worth, going to be worth two points. C is going to be worth that two points that fourth and fifth point. D is worth one point. E is worth one point, uh, number one. E number two is worth two points. F is worth one point. And G is worth one point at the end. So hopefully that helped. That was the 2018 uh, AP Chemistry exam question number one. Make sure you put your AP Chem test score uh, in for me on MrAiden.com so that I can take a look. I'll catch you on the next video. See you.